Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful morning and welcome to the FSL Wild Rift Open 2. I am Gerard Escape Artist and I'm joined by Tanya and me and we're going to be bringing you through the second day of action. I'm really excited to see the teams here. I expect that the gameplay will be a lot better than yesterday because a lot of these teams have gone through many rounds. They have fought so hard just to get here. And some of them are still eyeing the grand final, especially next play. Yeah, that's right. Next play, Tempest would definitely want to defend their grand, uh, their championship. No, the fact that they are champions. Yes, that's right. <laughs> A little brain fart there, but yes, they are, of course. Um, you know, Yesterday, we saw the uh, winner's bracket final where Evos Savage Girl went up against Dr. Hellcats, and Dr. Hellcats won that, and they are going to be waiting for whoever is the champion of all these uh, lower bracket rounds that you see here to face off against them in the BO3 Grand Finals. And in the first Wild Rift Open, it was actually Next Play Tempest who uh, fought Dr. Hellcats in the finals. And Next Play Tempest took that one 3 nil. So let's see if history will repeat itself or if perhaps another one of these teams will be going up against the Hellcats in the finals. And of course, we will get to see Team AA today in our very first match. We didn't manage to watch them on our stream yesterday, mm -hmm. but uh, very experienced players. I know some of them came from LoL PC, competed in FSL Elite as well. Got to keep an eye on their jungler, Mika. So pretty excited to see one of my friends play. Ah, yes. So I know your friend's going to be playing. I'm sure you're going to be cheering for her. But another thing is also that this is not the first time that Next Play has played against Team AA in this tournament. So for the very first round yesterday, in the first round, Next Play Tempest took out Team AA and then Team AA fought their way through five losers bracket games where they won all of them, obviously. And now they're going to be going <laughs> up against Next Play again. So we're going to see if perhaps they've learned a thing or two in their fight to get back here and whether they can take down Next Play Tempest and move on to the next round. Of course, the issue is that it is the lower bracket, so it's just one chance and one of these teams are going to be out. So very high stakes here going into the first game. Yep, definitely. In fact, it's high stakes all the way today because we're covering the entire lower bracket after this. And uh, even, I mean, in the grand finals, you know, it, it may be a, a BO3, but you definitely want to win every single game that you can. So very high stakes stuff today. It's going to be very exciting. You're going to see the teams pull out their very best because right now they only have one shot at this. And I'm sure they all want to win without a doubt. And it's going to be interesting to see what the teams pull out because as you move further into a competition, a lot of times uh, the meta kind of evolves. Um, even though meta picks, S tier picks, we still expect to see. But say, take the Icon series in the Philippines, for example, in the last weekend, uh, suddenly we saw uh, Support Ash come out from Team Liam. So it could be Support Ash, there could even be Jungle Fizz, there could be Mid Lane Darius, uh, maybe some Sona Seraphine in the bot lane. Who knows, you know, like, I'm really looking forward to see how teams adapt and maybe pull out some of these surprises that will also catch the other team off guard. Yeah, that's right. I'd like to talk about the adaptation to the meta because yesterday we saw huge priority on champions like Camille and Galio in the start of the day. But then as time went on, we kind of saw them fade to the point that they just completely fell through the draft in one game and, you know, they no, no team even like better than Eyelid at all. I mean, if you think about execution, it is difficult to execute a Kumio Galio combo, especially in a map like Wild Rift compared to League of Legends, where we see that executed, I would say, more frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, here is like people just move out like really fast because the map is really so small, yeah. right? And Galio's ultimate is only that big. It's not like it covers a huge amount of space. Uh, speaking of execution as well, I would say that Next Play has stood out a lot. Um, they have been the ones that have been executing those tower dives. They know how to step on the pedal, which is something different from all the other teams. Absolutely. They really know how to push and pull the uh, flow of the game, really. And uh, many played that to their success, especially, of course, in the bot lane. We have Chabi and Gia, the challenger duo in the bottom lane, the dragon lane. And they have had an absolutely phenomenal performance so far in this tournament. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they pull out this time. 
Yeah, not to count out Hellcats as well, where we saw a, a wonderful Akali performance from your mid laner rogue. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're just really looking forward to see who will step up to the plate and face them in the grand finals. Yeah, that's right. Right now, of course, we're going to be going to draft really soon. The next play, Tempest, going up against Team AA. And of course, for Team AA, like we mentioned before, they have... They they have fallen at the very start to next play Tempest, so this is really kind of a revenge match for them to say, hey, we fought all we fought all the way up here, and we're gonna take you down this time. We hit it into the draft now for game one, of day two of the FSL Wild Rift Open. And right off the bat, hovering that Fiora. Uh, I don't think it's wise to pick this blindly, but. They might just go ahead and do so just because it's open. Looks like next play gonna take that risk. Yep. We see uh, that actually the uh, overlay is uh, swapped actually. It's next right. play Team Tempest AA. on red side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Team AA are the ones who pick up the Fiora first. And uh, next play is signaling that they might go for this Galio Camille combo because they very quickly locked in that Galio and their jungler has been immensely successful and vibe. So, no change from there. They're just going to stick to what they are really strong on. And on the opposite side, next play respond with their bot lane, Zaya Rakan. Actually, we have not seen Rakan on stream yeah. so far. Uh, generally, he's not been considered an S tier support pick. They did buff him in patch 2.3, just a little bit if I'm not wrong. Trying to get Rakan into the meta, but not quite yet. Yeah, well, we're gonna see whether it works out for Team AA because they have picked up that Lover's Duo in the bot lane. Over on the side of Next Play Tempest, they secure for themselves the Camille Galio comp, as well as a Vi to jump in as well, and the Tristana. Yeah, super high single target damage, Tristana's bomb, Vi there for the CC as well as Camille. Uh, with the added AoE combo with Galio. So, Team AA responding with their own set of AoEs. They have Wukong, who has been quite successful in the jungle, even though we see a lot of these teams who pick up Wukong uh, not doing too well in the early game, but he does make a very big difference in team fights. The RE pick as well, something that we've seen rather prominent in this tournament where you always see the Aries able to land those charms and really help their teams pick off their opponents. And on the side of Next Play Tempest, GI is gonna finish off the comp by picking up a Lulu. So that signals that it's gonna be a Galio mid. Something a little bit different. Obviously both can be flexed. Um, yeah, but it's a lot of protection. I think Next Play has shown that they really do like this Enchanter support because they have shown very good skills on Janna, uh, protecting Chabi all the time. It's really going to be the Chabi show once again. Yeah. We don't expect their game plan to change. So it's going to be interesting to see how Team AA adapt here because yesterday we saw that a lane swap came out. However, Next Play was the one who benefited from that lane swap. Mm -hmm. So how will Team AA deal with so much pressure coming up from Chabi and her support, Gia? Yeah, I wanted to uh, actually take a look at the summoner spells here, about how offensive the summoner spells on the side of Team AA are. We've got two Ignites, one Exhaust and one Heal, compared to the three Barriers and one Heal on the side of Next Play. Yeah, but Barrier has been the name of the game. Yesterday, we saw how hard it was to burst down someone who has Barrier. And next play again, just sticking to Barrier on most of their champions, really. Looking at the team composition for Team AA, there's a lot of scaling going on. Think about Fiora, you think about Zaya, and even Uko, who needs some time to ramp up. He's not going to be here ganking every lane in the early game. So, it's really about for Team AA to play defensively and get the items that they want. That's right, both junglers have started on their red buffs. And by the looks of things, Angel immediately moving down towards the bottom side of a jungle. Again, piling towards bot side, which signals that we might get an early dive or an early gank at the very least to blow some of these summoner spells. And that's right, Chabi and Gia are doing a fair amount of poke damage there. 
Interestingly enough, the uh, AD carry from Team AA is uh, called Karzi, but no, this is not the uh, same Karzi that the Mad Lions. Picking <laughs> inspiration from, yeah. from there. <laughs> it is inspiration for sure. That AD carry in the bot lane and definitely will want to play as well as Karzi if uh, she wants to carry her team into the next round. Why is Hovering waiting for the Scuttle Crab? We have to look at how she, where she goes rather after this, after she secures this. I suspect that they do want to get Chabi a hit, but looks like just not yet. Looking for that level 5 on Vi. And that's right, gonna be able to take that Gromp and move ever closer to that ultimate. This guaranteed single target CC on pretty much everybody except Zaya, who could use her ultimate to escape that, but we not. It's gonna be a little sneakier and take away her opponent's Krugs. Oh god! Yeah. Might spot this out, yeah. Yep, it's been spotted. But Weena already s smited, smitten. <laughs> those Krugs smited. <laughs> smited, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and this is textbook oh. play from next play. Yep. Oh? But she is going to back off, looks like they're not going to commit to any sort of dive at the moment, but wow. Yeah. The amount of jungler presence, the amount of jungler proximity for next play. Oof. Yeah, Angel needed one more cap to hit her level 5, so I think she tried to go and sneak those Krugs away, but thanks to some quick moves from TAA, they were able to spot that one out. And so she had to go back to her own jungle and now she's level 5, and the ganking can begin. yet maybe do a raptor camp first uh odd lane is not doing too well lulu's still level four whereas on the side of team aa already level five i think rakan also still level four so yeah. oh, looks like next play got the level five first will they make any moves yeah karzi here about slightly above half health chubby could potentially burst her down but needs to be aware of the feather storm as well she has. She didn't just use the feather pullback. Mm -hmm. the there is a window of... here because yeah. oh no, Rakan just hit level five, so looks like no risk taking. Next play, just gonna go back to get their first buy, get some items in. And we talk a lot about the bot lane, but not to mention and not to count out the top lane either. Mm -hmm. It is quite a big skill matchup because even though we saw Fiora being picked and knowing that she has very few counters right now here in Wild Rift, she can. Definitely outplay a Camille, but we saw Shasha on Camille yesterday in this very same matchup, beating up the enemy Fiora, right? Yeah. So it's gonna be a matter of skill, it's gonna be really exciting to see what happens. Yeah, oh, that's gonna be an engage right there. We're not going in there, so three man knockup Gia's health bar is so low, but where can the damage come out from for Team AA? Ayu is in the front trying to do her best, but there's just not enough. Next player drops low, but no one falls. So some of the ultimates we use, that means it's three ultimates on the side of Team AA in exchange for two. But most importantly, I think Gia's ultimate, the Wild Rope, was used, which means less protection for Chabi, who just wasn't at that fight. That's right, and if you look at the summoner cooldowns here, Ray Ray used her barrier, and I think that's really the only thing that managed to keep her alive. The dragon is still up, but as you mentioned, Three ultimates on the side of Team AA are down, so they probably don't want to fight anything for now. Yeah, it was a good combo, but it's still too early in the game. Oh boy, there's no Spirit Rush available for IU gets caught up by that Hextech Ultimatum and Assaulted and Batteried, and First Blood goes over to Ray Ray. What a great roll from Hell Girl, coming all the way down from top lane. Team AA just didn't have the information and I think this could be Dragon for them. Yeah, the cooldowns are still unavailable. There's no Cyclone and that's going to be a massive taunt right there and a massive knockup as well. Feathers pull back doing a lot of damage. That's going to be Angel actually the first one to fall. Fiora walking away with a sliver of health here. Chabi able to find that jump, but Fangirl is on her. Meanwhile, Karzi is caught in the middle of three people and Hellgirl right now being the front line that his team needs. Ayu, however, the Spirit Rush just came back up and she's able to dash back in and clean up Gia. Meanwhile, Rei Rei and Chabi limping away from this one and Hell Girl try her best here, but unfortunately it's not enough. 
Overchased by next play. It started off really well because as we mentioned, just in the fight before, Team AA expended three ultimates. And they even picked one off, so they had the numbers advantage. But it looks like the game is just so fast that everyone reset, they die, they respawn, and here they are back at the dragon. Yeah, let's take a look at the ultimates right now. Really only the old boy, Karsi, who's stepping a little far forward right there, but the only ultimate available for Team AA right now is the Wukong ultimate. That's going to be a three-man knockup, however, from Khan. Galio's going to enter as well, and Hellgirl has caught Wiener out. Wiener uses that Cyclone, but it's not going to be enough damage to finish off Angel. Now Ray Ray's on a killing spree, and the rest of Team AA are forced to back away. Yeah, both teams really trying to do their best to play around these cooldowns. They know what ultimates were used, and they know wh which fights they could take. So next play, recognizing that they still had Galio ultimate, um, decided to use that to try and secure the dragon. It was a good smite as well from Vi. So I think overall, I think next play still came out of that a hit. That's right, these teams are nearly neck and neck right now. Angel is charging up that Vault Breaker to go over the wall there has yet to be a rotate from team aa's bot lane so it looks like that's happening right now next player the first ones to the herald however and it looks like team aa are not going to contest this one yeah ray ray's just gonna zone out with that oh but oh dear fango walking a little too far forward there able to dash away but chabi jumping forward maybe fighting off a bit too much than she could chew that's not enough protection right there chabi not too far forward there and a charm as well ray ray just his punch is actually blocked out and he's gonna fall as well it's gonna be two kills for team aa oh quite uncharacteristic there of chabi yesterday we saw her play very disciplined um, didn't really overstep too much. That is what makes next play a really strong team, but... Oh. Why Gia forced to flash away as well. Not enough damage from the Fiora, but still very scary stuff there. Next play losing out on the mid turret. Yeah, Chavi really wanted to get the reset here in this mid lane. Couldn't get it, just stepped a bit too far and immediately Team AA punish. Right now it's Looking at the items. Mm -hmm. You can actually see that the AD carries are more or yeah. less neck and neck. Infinity Edge already and Zaya just bought Executioner's Calling. And then we use that healing. Um, Vi as well has her GA, so she can yeah. be that front line that next play needs and go in with her ultimate. Still not too bad. Next play is still in the goal lead. But maybe they they need to be a little bit more disciplined need yeah. to control themselves a bit more because if you look at the game since the since the start, I would say that they overchased twice already and got punished for that. Yeah. Now Hell Girl might be in a spot of trouble. She missed that hook shot right there. The Hextech Ultimate coming out onto IU. She's gonna try to do damage to dissuade them from diving her and it seems to have worked out. Hell Girl surviving with about 200 health and now Next play. Seeing that, they summon the Rift Herald in the middle lane, they take out the mid outer turret. Are they going to escort this one in for another charge? Yeah, that's it. You know, next play may have overstepped twice so far, but their rotations have been on point. The moment they secured Dragon, they rotated their dual lane to the top side of the map, secured that Rift Herald, and once again, they rotated such that um, Helgo absorbed some pressure at top, for the rest of them plow down mid. So whatever the case is, you have Marco here, very solid from next play. That's right, Dragon is gonna be coming up in 20 seconds right now. Both teams are gonna start posturing around again. You can see that Chabi is gonna be able to make one more reset before this one begins. Angel. It's gonna be Inferno. Yep, that's right. And both the Baron laners are in the Baron lane right now, so most likely not gonna do too much in this fight. But we can see the pings of the rest of the teams are moving towards the dragon. Angel did start it up for just a second to kind of force Team AA to move down, but Chabi may be a little in an awkward spot there, forced to use the rocket jump. Should be just fine for now. 
Yeah, both teams are still holding back. I think their vision setup on both sides is just not quite complete. So no one really wants to act without knowing uh, what information that they have. Angel and the rest of the team are now around that dragon. They're dropping it. They are actually going to peel off for Wina. Wina has that Garnet Angel. Rakan going in with the quickness there, landing charms. CC up the entire enemy team, Carson with an aggressive, but wow, that's a five man Galia ultimate right there, is it gonna be enough however the damage, where is it right now, Chavi is trying her best to fire away, they actually managed to pop the Garnet Angel, Kazi stepping far forward as well, Ray Ray gonna land a taunt right there onto two, we now, oh Fangirl is the first one to fall and Chavi right now gets a double kill and this is the reset, is she gonna be able to fight anymore, Kazi is gonna blow up as well, Chavi, will she be able to find one more jump onto Ayu there, will Ayu be able to take her down, no, Chabi picking up a triple kill and showing her team no quarter kill actually, showing how to Goomba stomp on Tristana. Oh my gosh, that was so good by next play. I think oh, that was one of the hell? best. Girl actually oh. in the top lane, is she gonna find oh. that last auto attack? Oh. No! Fiara finding the retribution kill there saying Chabi may take down four of us, but I am not going to fall. A little bit of micro there at the top lane, but wow, next play. Among all the games, I think that was the best kite back I've ever seen since yesterday. If you look closely at what they did, first of all, they did peel back for Chavi, and even though ultimates were used and a lot of cooldowns were up, you look at Galio, Ray Ray, that single taunt going back in for the re-engage completely changed their fate. It is so beautiful to see that it means that they are communicating so well together. They know what skills they have as a team, and they use it collectively. Gia there used the huge fire on herself. Not too sure that was about, but um, for now, next next play actually have an advantage in terms of gold, a solid advantage. The first time in this game, and they're going on to Fango, but I think she'll be all right. They do have river control at the very least, and they have Hell Girl in the bottom lane pushing in that wave. Baron is on the board and pings are going down. Next play just need to push up top wave first and keep an eye on mid lane. They are gonna peel off that Baron and wait in the bush. Baron wasn't really able to reset there so it's actually still pretty low dropping to about 4,000. Keep your eyes on the junglers right there. Angel is the one in the pit and Wina actually is not there to respond or steal or anything. So that means that, oh wait, wow, wow, that yellow damage right there. <laughs> that was pretty disgusting. But hey. And with Baron, Helgo can put some pressure here, but... Maybe. Ooh. Oh, that was an attempt at a predict. Mm -hmm. But Hell Girl is going to outjuke her opponents there. The hook shot. Yeah, she's really good at creating pressure, even though we don't see a lot of flashy kills. But you have to give her a lot of credit for taking the pressure from the enemy team. It was either Ari who went to her Baron lane at the start of the game, and now we have Wukong and we have Rakan also paying some attention yeah. here. And the way that she balances this with the rest of the team on the map is commendable. It is absolutely commendable. You can see Helgo rotating up to the top side now that the rest of the team is in bottom lane. Chabi with that. Huge rage there, able to just poke out her opponents and Karzi already nearly falling. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, that's gonna be Ayu there, forced to flash, forced to use the Spirit Rush as well. I'm not sure if Ray Ray was able to clean out that kill. Unable to do so, Wina actually going in with the Cyclone to kind of sacrifice herself. Has the Garden Angel, he popped the Stone Plate as well, but Chabi right now, an absolute monster, dodging out on those charms. The minions pummeling that mid lane and Hellgirl pummeling the top lane. That's gonna be next play Tempest taking all of the inhibitor turrets right now and they only have one Nexus that stands between them and the next round. Chabi gonna continue auto attacking right there, gets knocked up, but really what can Team AA do? Chabi's just gonna auto attack that Nexus, just gonna take out the Fiora there, no trouble at all, gonna maybe find a few more kills? Nope. Next play Tempest decided just gonna clean up that Nexus and move on to the next round. Congratulations to next play. I think it was very well earned. We see their team play, I think, level up even more, which is very scary for anyone watching next play right now. Also, what a 
find out whether anyone will start denying them this vibe pick in the jungle because and and how do you say angela <laughs> angela and, and, sure Sure, Angela has been so active on Vi, and we saw it, right? We saw her hovering bot lane so much in the early game. Realistically, what are teams going to respond? Can they also match her? Can they counter gank her? Or can they deny Vi altogether? That is the question. Yeah, that's right. I think it's uh, they really need to figure out a way to play against so many of these things right now because Hellgirl on Camille or on Fiora on these split pushing giants is an absolute monster as well with her ability to create pressure and pull enemies across the map towards her position and give her the rest of her team advantages. There are so many things right now about this next play squad that makes them look really good and makes them look like real contenders right now for the title of a winner of FSL Wild Rift Open 2. Of course, their hopes and dreams are still alive because they're moving on to the next round. And for now, uh, let's see. The next round will be for them to go up against, I believe, Next Gen Stars, who we did see yesterday. And for now, we're going to be going for a short break. But when we come back, we're going to watch Next Play Tempest go up against Next Gen Stars. You don't want to miss the action. See you soon. <laughs> 